Here at the High Plains Environmental Center, we're very focused on native plants. We grow native plants in our nursery. We have these demonstration gardens here to help people understand how to grow these plants and how beautiful they are and how important they are to wildlife. These plants evolved here in Colorado. They're well adapted to our high winds, arid climate and bright sun, and they have very important relationships to the wildlife. There are a lot of plants that can only be pollinated by native bees and insects that provide very important food for birds and other wildlife, and they're beautiful. They belong here in Colorado, and we celebrate these plants and really hope other people will want to do so also. One of the reasons native plants are so important is they've co-evolved with the pollinators that depend on them. And a great example is this milkweed plant. The milkweed, like many other plants, is toxic to most insects. But the monarch butterfly has developed a tolerance for that toxicity and can eat the leaves. So the monarch butterfly will lay her eggs on this plant. The eggs will hatch and the caterpillars will eat the leaves. When the monarch matures, it will come back and feed only on milkweed plants, and in so doing, it will pollinate the milkweed. So the milkweed plant depends on the monarch, and the monarch depends on the milkweed. And that is a perfect example of the symbiotic relationship between pollinators and their host plants. So here we are in our native plants garden. It's August 22nd, and this garden has never once been watered this year. It's full of flowers, it's lush. And the amazing thing about it is you can sit here and watch honeybees and tiny little native bees, bumblebees, but this particular plant is really cool. This is called Desert Four O'Clock, and it's really valuable to nighttime pollinators. because it opens up in the nighttime and it closes in the mid-morning when it starts to get hot. It's just starting to open up now, and you'll see sphinx moths and other moths flying around it all night, which is really cool. Habitat is basically food, water, shelter, and space. And it's important that we design our gardens to be able to accommodate those things. So the food could be the flowers, the nectar, maybe fruit for birds, and having things like this American plum that provides both flowers and, and fruit. Water could be as simple as a bird bath or a pond. People over prune shrubs, and we need to have shrubs that are taller and layers in our landscape for different types of insects and birds and nesting high up enough to be away from people. Also not be too aggressive about cleaning up our garden because in the floor of the garden where we have leaves in the fall and so on, those could be sheltering insects and helping creatures get through the winter. And also a lot of the dead stems in winter time, there are some insects that will overwinter inside those stems. So if we're cutting the flowers off and we're removing them from our garden, we may actually be removing beneficial pollinators from our garden. To learn more about our Suburbitat vision, contact us at High Plains Environmental Center or suburbitat.org.